Comic book games have always been a mixed bag quality-wise. For every gem of a game, there's at least a dozen flops. While DC Comics haven't released as many games as Marvel, until recently their games weren't really as well received as Marvel's. That's why in 2007, after a string of games that were critically considered mediocre at best, DC licensed out three of their most popular IPs, Superman, Batman, and The Flash, to studios for AAA games. Superman and The Flash went to a company called Brash Entertainment, a startup form that same year that only dealt in making licensed games. Brash handed The Flash IP to a relatively young company called Bottle Rocket, but the Superman IP was given to a seasoned company called Factor 5, a studio best known for their work on the Turrican and Star Wars Rogue Squadron series of games. Running under the codename Blue Steel, the game was being made for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii, and the footage that was released looked really promising. It was set to be an open world game that let players take on some of Superman's greatest villains such as Doomsday, Brainiac, and Darkseid. Sadly, Brash Entertainment went bankrupt in 2008, and with that, Factor 5's funding disappeared. The studio attempted to continue working on the game on their own dime until they could find a new publisher, but between the game not being far along enough in development, the 2008 recession, and the poor reception of Factor 5's last game, Lair, they weren't able to find a buyer and the US branch of the company shut down in May 2009. They weren't able to pay any of their employees for months of work on the game either. This would eventually lead to a string of lawsuits that would kill the rest of the company by 2011. Blue Steel is the last known attempt at making a solo Superman game for consoles. There have been rumors since about other Superman games, but the only standalone game to have actually come out since then is a mobile tie-in game for the Man of Steel movie. Maybe someday a truly fun Superman game will come out, but it's just a shame that financial mismanagement led to the cancellation of two potentially good DC Comics games. However, don't go feeling sorry for DC just yet, because remember that Batman game that started development around the same time? Well. Let's just say with that one, DC finally found that gem they were looking for. If you'd like to learn more about the game, check out Unseen 64 for extra footage and extra concept art of the game. You can also check out their collaboration with Digino Gaming, which covers the game's cancellation. Man, does it feel weird to be back. Um, but we are here after a very, very long time. We have finally made it to the Daily Planet's parking garage. Um, we never actually go inside the Daily Planet at all for some reason. I don't know if this is attached or inside the building, but we never actually go see the offices. We just see Jimmy Olsen slowly being chased by these two robots. Although I use the term chased very loosely because he's not moving. The thing is, though, if those robots ever touch Jimmy in the game, like this exact room happens, and if they touch him, you get a game over. So, what would happen if you could actually do that in this scene? Because the camera, it thinks that the camera's Superman. That's why they get close. So, I wonder if you can actually hack it so you have control and you get a game over on the screen. I'm actually super curious about that. However, this looks like a job for Superman. This does look like a job for Superman. Although... Um, we're not going to be doing all the heavy lifting this time around. We have a tiny bit of help from the police to arrest Darkseid. Now, normally this is where I would put a bio showing how this is a terrible idea. But we're going to do that a little bit later. I don't want to front end all the, all the intros and everything. So, I will just say this police car is incredibly important. This is the actual end of the stage, this cop car. So, I'm going to do the same thing and move it out of the way. Just need to make sure this thing stays safe. And I figure, like, I figure the easiest and best place to put something you don't want damaged is in midair. That's probably the answer I was going to use, except it's not. The cop car is actually stuck. Oh, now it's not stuck anymore. It's very far away. I'm actually going to hide the cop car inside the wall. I figure that might be safe. No bullets can probably get through walls, right? There we go. They should be fine. Hopefully. So, since this is a parking garage, I figure we're gonna actually gonna see some cars here, as you can see. But this is the worst parking garage I have ever seen. Like, look here. You can't even use these spaces. The, like, Superman's almost too broad to be here. How the fuck could you use any of these spots? None of them are lined up. And there's people shooting at you. Who would use the garage where you're getting shot at? I mean, that's besides the point. The real point is that we actually have cars in this stage. The problem is, um, they're all magical cars where they spin on your head, and if you hold up and press the Z button, you'll fall through the floor. 
Uh, I don't think that's how cars work in real life, and apparently that's how they work in Superman. The problem is, now that we've fallen through the floor, um, the camera's gonna be a little stupid, so if you give me a second to get it caught on something, it'll start humping the ground. I have a feeling this is how all cameras should be working. No, if I, there's a certain spot I can find, and if I do that, I'll make you go blind. Apparently, there we go! Oh, no, almost, almost, you almost did it. I think I landed on someone. There we go. That was a lot of work just to fall through to one floor. And we're probably going to die because we're in a room with one of those stupid rocket tanks. Did we kill it? How did we fall through another floor? I didn't mean to fall through another floor. Damn it. All right, hang on a sec. We can get out of this. Actually, hang on, I've got an idea. Okay, that works too. That works too. I think we killed the tank. We're, okay, perfect. We're, we're at right where I want to be. So this room is very important because it has guys shooting at us and it has kryptonite. So we are gonna need to remember where this stage is. The problem is this whole stage is a maze. So you're gonna be flying around a lot to find this spot good news is, this stage is such a shitty maze that once you actually know where everything is, you don't actually need to go through more than half of the stage. You pretty much skip entire chunks of the stage. The downside is, you kind of have to play the stage to learn it. I picked the wrong room. There was supposed to be health in this one. It must be the other one. The one problem with clipping through the floors is you will always get shot at because you do not see what is hitting you because the camera does not cooperate. Then again, I don't think the designers intended for you to fall through the floor, but that's the game they've made, so that's the game we're playing. Okay, so for all our goofing around, we actually need to go up. This is a, like I said, a three floor stage. So we've got the top floor is where we started. Second floor is where we clipped through. The elevator wanted to go up. I wanted to go down. Whatever, we're staying up. There's a third floor, trust me on this. It's very important. There will be a test. I'm not writing it, though. Someone else has to write the test to submit it to other people. So if you want to write a test, <laughs> email it to this address. I'm not actually putting an address on screen. Maybe I have. Maybe it actually works. You'll never know. Unless you try. Don't actually try. Don't actually try. This stage has my favorite mechanic. Uh... And that's weird to say about this game. But notice the, this super awkward brick wall that we just smash an enemy towards? Well, if you punch the wall, or in some cases, walk through it, <laughs> they crumble like styrofoam bricks out of like a, a kaiju movie, like a Godzilla movie or a Power Rangers episode. And it's so dumb, but it's so funny. And awesome. I just love that it's there. But the weird thing is, like, you can knock enemies into it. You can throw things at it, and it won't break. It has to be Superman. But Superman can just touch it, and it'll crumble. Like, here, I'm going to grab this car. Hopefully, it's not going to blow up. Even though all cars in the stage are bombs, so don't be surprised if it blows up. Oh, that actually, wow, it worked for once. 90, like, 90% of the time, that does not work. So, there you go. I guess you can break it with other things. Prove myself wrong here. So let's choose an enemy. This guy's already shooting other guys, so I think he's on our side already. There we go. We're on the same side now. You guys have fun. Don't do anything I would do. And this is actually an interesting looking little parking spot. This place looks very important. Especially this one car just kind of sitting here. I'll show you the car once we get rid of the, like, 20 guards protecting this car. Um... Let's try not to pick up any more cars. So this looks like a... Uh, no, I wouldn't call that a limo at all. I would, just, I would call this like a roadster, I guess. But we can't pick it up. It's the only car you can't pick up on the stage, so fuck it. Let's move it to the right, and it just blows up immediately. That is very important, because that car is just like the cop car is very important. Keep in mind that we have destroyed it, because we're going to walk through this wall. Oh, ooh, we can't walk through this one. This is a special wall. This one used better cement. Nope, they did not. 
So we did all that just to take this elevator all the way down to the ground floor. I What was up with those bricks I just saw flash on screen? I'm just going to skip a lot of the maze because really it's not even worth showing. Like, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Here's a four-way path. We have to turn right. If we go in these other paths, all we get is more enemies and more empty parking spaces. Oh, no. We got one guy parked down here. One guy got stuck up here. I guess he's trying to find out, figure out where he parked. I can see how hard it is to find your stall with all the things around here. How about we throw this car at him? Happy birthday! Yeah, there we go. Actually having fun. But... But that's basically how this whole stage works. It's just this. And... <laughs> the guest parking is in the basement? What? Who would use that? Killed you. We're gonna... Like, that's all, all the rooms are. They're just weird random rooms that have next to nothing in them there, there's power-ups in case you need more health but that's about it you don't need to do so much of this stage and it's so weird because every other stage up to this point you've at least had to do part of it but this is the one where they're just like we made a giant stage and then we realized we didn't actually use it keep that in mind for later this room coming up here this should be the room i'm looking for Although, now that I've gone out of path, it's going to be a little tricky to find the correct one. Yep, here we go. So this room here is incredibly important, just like everything else I'm pointing out. I'm going to rid you. You go inside that room. Perfect. Because we're going to see you in a second. You think nothing of this. You see just a room blocked off, so you figure, all right, I'm going to walk into it. Let's see what happens. Nothing, because I weren't, apparently weren't going fast enough. Nope. Screw it, we'll punch it. We found the room that the opening cutscene was made in. Jimmy is trapped with these two robots, and if we step forward, they'll end up killing him. So we have to find Luther's access card. It's the only way to deactivate the shadow creeps. I saw him drop it under his black car. So now we have to go find a black car. Also, there's that dude we punched earlier. He's just hanging out. He does not care. He actually is not even noticing us here. So as we step towards Jimmy... The robots come close, and like I said at the beginning, if they touch him, he dies. But, if you walk around them... Uh, I might have done this wrong, but let's find out. Back it up, back it up. Oh, we might have done this wrong, hang on. If you get close enough, you can actually pick up the robots and destroy them. Oh, oh, that guy woke up. Hang on, we might have a problem. I was going to let you live, too. You were going to be my only friend. Carefully sneak up on him. Sneak up slowly. 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 There we go. Jimmy, you're free! Jimmy, I've done it! You didn't expect me to do this, did you? Let's go! Let's go, Jimmy. Towards that wall. Just be careful where you're putting your head. That's that's not what this is for. <laughs> Wake up, Jimmy. So as you can tell, you're not actually supposed to do that. You're not actually supposed to be able to save Jimmy at all that way. But doing this actually lets you move Jimmy around the entire stage. You can move him to pretty much wherever you want in the stage at that point if you have the patience, which for some reason I do. The problem is, doing that actually breaks the stage. You are supposed to get that key card, come back and find Jimmy. And if you do that, and you've moved Jimmy too far away from this, he actually won't trigger the cutscene and you're stuck in the stage. You've softlocked yourself. So unfortunately, we have to leave Jimmy here. So, Jimmy pointed out that we need to find a black car. And I don't think we've really seen a black car per se. We did see that purple car that we destroyed, so maybe uh, maybe that purple car will still be there? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm being, I'm, I'm bad at being intentionally vague. The car is back! Also, this is very clearly purple. I don't understand why they say black car. Like, the, the front, the top part here, that's the only thing that looks black. But the whole point is that you punch the car, you still can't pick it up, and there's the magical key card. It only gets dropped after you've talked to Jimmy. 
And for some reason, now the car is indestructible again. I don't know why, but it dies in one hit. But otherwise, it'll start floating around like a hot air balloon. And if you really want, you can try to take it with you down the elevator. And you can also... Whoa! That was a good... Yeah! There we go! Dance on top of our victory car. You aren't going to be able to drive out of here now, Lex. It's a good thing this is a virtual reality world. I'm dancing on your damn upside-down car. I've actually never managed to do that before. Hang on. Hmm. How about we take this exploding car and throw it at the indestructible car? Or we could throw it too well. All right, I'm sure if I hit this, it's just going to flip back up. But I'm just, I'm happy this actually did this. I've never seen it land on its top before. This is awesome. Oh, dude, it can't, it can't turn around. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, there we go. Now it's on its side. Now we've got some cover we can hide behind. Still can't pick it up. Oh, we have completely screwed up this car. I'm sorry. I mean, we can make progress or we could play with this beach volleyball of a car here. So, you know which one I'd prefer. Oh, now it's not fun. Okay, so we've got the key card. All we gotta do is go back down to Jimmy, and we can move on to the next part. Very, very slowly. Although, for some reason, they don't have enough time to actually shoot you, so there's actually no real worry. So back down on this floor, we just have to go right back to Jimmy. It's actually a very short path, thank goodness. And pop him back in this room. He's just hanging out, and he'll finally walk towards us. Very excitedly, apparently. Darkseid so plans to blow up this building. He's hitting a bomb here. You're our only hope. Bye. D D Jimmy? Jimmy? Where'd you go? Jimmy. Okay, so now we have ten minutes to actually find a bomb. And if you don't know where you're going, it's kind of annoying. Conveniently, we know where we're going. Or unfortunately, we know where we're going. Which way you want to look at it. It was that room that I showed off earlier with the kryptonite. And you will probably find that room by accident just trying to figure out where Jimmy is. So really, it's just a case of learning the map at all. So get on the second floor. Just keep flying forward. Ignore the giant fucking generator slash nuclear missile just sitting in the middle of this parkade. Oops, didn't mean to land on a power-up. All right, you know what? We're friends now. We're on the same side. Shoot them for me. Thank you. There's health down here too, but I'm not worried at the moment. I don't know if this thing does nothing. Is it just, is it literally just supposed to be a power generator? Is it supposed to be like, oh, Darkseid has influenced this building. This is the bomb. It's because your first time through, you might also think that's the bomb. It's not. The bomb is like a tiny ass, like nuke. As, as tiny as nukes are. So we go through all that. We found the room that we got the kryptonite in before. So we had to get up here to realize it. So it's in that room that says danger, you know, being subtle and everything. And these lasers have finally turned on. And we've seen these in previous stages, so don't worry. That means crates are around here for some reason. Hey, look at that, two crates. But these crates have helium in them, helium in them apparently because you start floating up no matter what. And if you're not careful, you'll actually get stuck and someone will die. I actually, wait, oh. Someone is definitely dying. What is going on over there? So we will carefully solve the puzzle. Now, if you remember from an earlier stage, and yes, I am asking that to see if you actually do remember or are just going to go back and watch the video, you don't actually have to cover up both lasers with boxes. You can just step over the second one, and then the door will open. So there you go. We walk in. Let's get rid of this thing before we lose all our health. And here is our bomb. Not that giant thing out there, this tiny ass little thing here. This tiny thing that will not at all have a problem if I heat it up to a million degrees. Ah, oh, it's fine. It's good, it's a little warm, a little toasty, no big deal. So, I mean, you figured out, I said it earlier, we need freeze breath. You freeze it, it drops, timer stops, and then the door starts freaking out. Because Jimmy has found you, and he's going to inform you that you've done a good job. The uh, the thing is, though, you don't need Jimmy to actually be in here. You can actually just 
walk through the door. It's not even that hard to do, at least to get in the room. So you can do it out of sequence and get rid of the bomb right away. Getting out of the room is a little harder. But if you do that, uh, it actually completely breaks the game. Once you go find Jimmy, he'll say, okay, go find the key card to, free, to stop the robots. Then he disappears. Everything in that room despawns. The key doesn't show up. Jimmy's gone. The boss doesn't show up. Everything's just broken. So if you can find the correct trigger, you might be able to completely just skip the entire stage. But for now, you have to do things legitimately, which kind of sucks. Speaking of kind of sucks, let's uh, deal with this door that Jimmy does not know how to open. Jimmy? Jimmy? There you are. Well done, Superman. But Darkseid doesn't accept defeat easily. He'll be back for revenge. I'm gonna walk in this room with this nuke. Bye. How does he do that? How does everyone do that? Okay. So now we have to find ourselves Darkseid. Uh-oh. Alright, so you may have noticed we've actually just cut back to the vibrating door again. And uh, there's a reason for that. I actually screwed up something and I didn't realize it until here, because this is pretty much the only time in the normal run you'll actually see that you've screwed it up. So, remember at the beginning how I knocked that cop car through the wall? And remember when the camera was vibrating when Jimmy was talking? Remember when he couldn't stop shaking? And then he walked away and it got better? Uh, putting the cop car through the wall in a certain spot actually moves the cop car down a floor. It actually moves it into the same area where the bomb is. So that just means you actually move the location for ending the stage, which is very helpful because Darkseid is actually on this floor. Problem is, uh, keeping it near a bomb, maybe not the safest idea, so let's just uh, shimmy it out of the way a little bit more. Oh, crap. Uh. Uh. Maybe they'll spawn back. Do 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 do. Let's just. All right. Let's forget this. Let's go on an adventure. And let's find Dark Side. Found him. Missed him. Well, while I turn around, because it's gonna take a while and get hit by a missile. How about we learn about Darkseid? Here's his bio. I told you once, Superman. If you would not be my knight, you would be my pawn. I see you're a man of your word. I am many things, kal -El. You couldn't begin to imagine half of them. But for now, I shall take the role of executioner. <laughs> Aside from his kryptonite weakness, Superman is practically a god, so it only makes sense that at some point he would actually be challenged by a god. Or in this case, a dark god. That's why, out of Superman's entire gallery of rogues, no one is as deadly as Darkseid. Well, except for that guy that actually killed him, but uh, other than that, no one's deadlier. Part of a race of beings known as the New Gods, Darkseid is the ruler of Apocalypse, where he rules with an iron fist and plots to take over all of existence. Basically, just think Hitler, but with superpowers. Which kind of makes sense, as his creator, Jack Kirby, based him on dictators and politicians from the real world. Darkseid starts the series as a behind-the-scenes character, pulling the strings of recurring villains that Superman has to deal with until he makes an attempt to take over Earth with his army. Since Darkseid's way more powerful than Superman, he easily beats the Man of Steel and almost succeeds in taking over the world, until his rival, the High Father, shows up and declares the planet Earth under his protection. Darkseid then spends the rest of the series just kind of messing with Superman until the end of the series, where he ends up brainwashing Superman into believing that he's Darkseid's son and makes him invade Earth. This partially backfires because once Superman snaps out of it, he flies to Apocalypse and defeats him using a move he pretty much learned from the Three Stooges. But Darkseid still gets the last laugh, though, because the people of Earth no longer trust Superman, which ends up laying down the groundwork for the Justice League cartoon. Darkseid was voiced by Michael Ironside, continuing the trend of voice actors for villains being from well-known films. He's best known for being in movies like Top Gun, Highlander 2, Starship Troopers, and the movie I know him the best for, Total Recall. 
However, the general gaming community would know him best as the voice of Sam Fisher from the Splinter Cell series of games, from the very first game in 2002 up until Splinter Cell Conviction in 2010. He had to pass up on doing the latest game in the series, Splinter Cell Blacklist, because he was unable to perform the motion capture needed for the game. For being such an important and powerful character in the series and comics, Darkseid actually gets the least amount of screen time of any villain in the game. While you meet every other boss at least twice in the game, Darkseid only shows up once for what is probably the easiest boss fight out of them all. What a weird setup to have for who was basically the final boss of the TV show. Darkseid appeared in seven episodes of the cartoon. Okay, so we know Darkseid is basically big bad number one. He's gonna basically kick our butt. So I feel like the most sensible thing to do is just crash into him and pick him up. That's all we need to do. And, well, maybe not get shot by the rocket. That's not the best idea. So now, Darkseid actually works the exact same way as those crates. He slowly flows, floats up, and if you're not careful, he can actually get stuck in the ceiling or put you through the floor. However, there's a thing about him that's screwed up. Oh. Oh my god, he almost went through the floor. So, is he... Is that his back, or is his head turned around? So he's actually supposed to talk to you. But you can actually just beat him up without letting him talk to you. And he won't do anything. See? He's just kind of hanging out. If you get close to him, he'll turn around and he'll start doing that. And he'll actually say some dialogue. But you don't actually need to even listen to him. In fact, you know what? Don't even bother. Don't even bother. Yes, I'm convinced that you'll destroy me, Mr. Frozen Man. That was a great boss fight. He will no longer get up. If he does, you'll knock him down in one hit. Now, you will trip on him. Where did he go? Where, where did he go? Did he go through the ceiling? What? All right, I'm gonna go find him. Hang on. Okay, here's the first floor. This should be... Oh my god. This place became a war zone in between. This should be roughly where he landed? I use that term very loosely. Um, where the hell is he? Did we accidentally... I think we accidentally despawned him out of the game. I'm really worried we did that. Oh my god, did we actually despawn him out of the game? Hang on. Oh, we've lost control of movement again. There we go. We got shot. We're fine. That fixed it. He really should have landed around here. Uh, the fact that he's not here worries me. He's, he's he spawned out of the game, isn't he? He flew through the ceiling, didn't he? Actually, wait. I think he might actually have flipped in the ceiling. So let me... This is going to sound dumb. Let me scan the ceiling to see if I can find him stuck there. No, he's straight up gone. Oh. Well, give me a minute. I'm going to have to replay the whole stage again. That was the ending, too. That was the end of the stage. And now I have to redo the entire thing because I tried to pick him up and he fell up. Unbelievable. What the fuck? Jimmy, what are you doing here? What? <laughs> I didn't know this. What are you doing here? B goodbye. Um, what? I found him. He actually respawned. Uh, are you actually going to try to fight me? Are you actually going to try to fight me after what we just went through? Stay down. Not impressed with you right now. Okay, so uh, as I found out, Jimmy apparently tells you upstairs that you have to bring Darkseid to the cops. The problem is, we don't have cops anymore. We kind of killed them. Uh, it, that complicates things a little bit. Or does it? 
the trigger for ending the stage stays where the cop car blows up. So you can end the stage by giving Darkseid to invisible police officers who will keep him arrested in presumably space jail because that's the only way ghost cops would work at this point. So we murdered the cops, we punched Darkseid right in the fucking jaw after he fell through the ceiling and uh, Jimmy's running around somewhere where there's a bomb that we froze. So I, all in all, I feel like this was a, a fruitful episode. I feel like a lot was accomplished today. So I think this deserves a big old save on the chest. Here we go. Let's enjoy that. Oh, let's take that in. Let's change that number that we're not even going to see anyways. That is it for that stage. It's hopefully it was not worth the wait. I'm sorry that it took this long, but it happened. We've gotten there. We sent a demigod to space jail. I feel like we accomplished something. It just really sucks that our only enjoyment after that... There's no time to waste. More fucking rings. We'll see you guys next time for the next ride stage.